Well, good morning. This is L. McMean. It is, I don't even know what date it is, sometime in May. I think the 21st or 22nd. I had the computer turned off, and you wouldn't believe how precarious this iPad is set up. It's, if you were here in my study here in Sparta, New Jersey, you'd see how precarious this thing is. Uh, it is back, there is a Bible behind this iPad and a little paperweight in the front to hold it. <clears throat> the Bible is appropriate because I tell you, I could not have recorded this recording among co called Strike Up the Band, but for the grace of God, I'll tell you that. Anyway, I wanted to talk with you about uh, marches. <clears throat> marches, band marches for guitar, how crazy is that? Uh, just to sh tell you how crazy that is, but try to make a case for it. There are three people, let's see, four people associated with band marches on the guitar uh, over a period of about 120 years, um, maybe more actually, 150 years. Um, that's how crazy this, this whole idea of trying to take Sousa marches and put them on guitar. Um, I learned something from a book by Douglas Back, very good player, B-A-C-K, and it's a Mel Bay book from 2011 called Great American Marches. It has a longer title. And on it, uh, uh, there's a, an arrangement for guitar, I believe it's in standard tuning, I didn't check that, by a gentleman by the name of Henry Vorhauer, V-O-R-H-A-U-E-R. And he, he did this arrangement of the Washington Post March, Sousa March, for guitar in uh, the late 19th century. And Doug writes that uh, there were string ensembles that did Sousa marches back then. He mentions mandolin. I think the melody was probably carried by the mandolin. But there were guitars involved. And supposedly, uh, Mr. Vorhauer had two arrangements, but this Washington Post arrangement that's in Doug's book was from an unpublished manuscript. So you have Vorhauer, you have the Washington Post march done, and Doug does a wonderful uh, uh recording of that on classical guitar associated with that book called Great American Marches. Uh, now, just parenthetically, when I did research to figure out whether there was any place for me to be doing these marches and to do a Mel Bay book, uh, the Mel Bay catalog had just this book and there was just one Sousa arrangement in this book. So that was kind of encouraging that there is a niche for me in, in, somehow in this area. So there's Vorhauer from the 19th century. He lived until 1946. Interestingly, he died the year uh, before I was born. So there are kind of intergenerational issues going on here. Then there's Doug Back, who wrote the book and played the arrangement beautifully. And then, of course, there's Guy Van Duzer, who did just an incredible version of Stars and Stripes. And it's not one that I've done. Why? do anything that's been done so well years and years ago and played by a number of, of very fine guitarists. Doug Smith, uh, I think I understand Muriel Anderson uh, did a version. Uh, I assume it was uh, Guy's version, I don't know for a fact. And so you have Vorhauer, Doug Back, Guy, and then my humble self on this thing. So, um, I want to, so that, that's kind of the history of, uh, in a nutshell, of Sousa marches on guitar. And why would I do anything like that? Uh, there's a personal reason and a more global reason. The personal reason is my first uh, serious instrument, or I should say I was a serious instrumentalist on the instrument, was clarinet. I played clarinet for nine years in various select bands, orchestras, uh, touring band as a freshman in college and then I gave that instrument up for guitar so I've had this residual interest in band music I've played many band uh, 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 many pieces of, of band music many marches um, and I described the uh, in more detail in my upcoming uh, Mel Bay book called strike up the band and it has a subtitle something like uh, classic band marches arranged for fingerstyle guitar. But the strike up the band exclamation point will get you to that book uh, when it is released pretty shortly. 
And I've just released my uh, extended play recording of six Sousa marches that I arranged for uh, guitar and performed on this, on this album. And as I say, the book kind of discusses the, the personal aspect of my own band connection and the like. Then there's the global aspect uh, in this sense. I think this march music, primarily by Sousa, but by some other um, uh, composers, for example, Frank Meacham did the American Patrol March, which is the first march I ever arranged on guitar. And I was going to put it on this album, but I frankly can't play it as well as I did on a YouTube thing I did a few years ago. And we just couldn't get the sound from that YouTube clip, to, to, it, just the sound right on this recording. So I uh, reluctantly went along with my wonderful uh, engineer, Mark Moss, of Target Studios on that and, and abandoned that. So I don't know whether it's still up on YouTube. Maybe I'll put it up again. But I played that in kind of in a flurry, burst of energy one day, just on the fly, and I just really haven't been able to duplicate it. Anyway, so that so that's the personal issue. The global issue is I think this music is among the greatest American music ever composed. These marches, and the best, and I chose what I believe to be the best six marches, putting aside Stars and Stripes, the best six marches that Sousa ever did. There was one other one I was thinking of called Fairs to the Fair, but I just didn't have the energy to do another one. And the book contains ten arrangements in different tunings, none of which is standard, but some close, drop D. And I think there's one in open G, I forget now, I have to look at it. But there are ten separate arrangements of marches in the upcoming Mel Bay book. So I thought, well, um, so that's the global thing. Personal thing, the band connection plus guitar. Global thing, this is great music. These marches, these Sousa marches, the later Sousa marches that are handled in this, uh, in this recording and, and the book, they're, they're very, they're amazing. They're changes of key, changes of movement, beautiful melodies, up-tempo stuff, uh, bridges that are tremendously dramatic, just wonderful pieces of music. And my sadness is that I, I had to distill them in a kind of a folk process, I wanted to make them accessible to players, and they're still fiendishly difficult, even with my simplified arrangements. And in a tuning that I'm going to talk about, the CGDGAD tuning, that is actually a, lends itself to this music. Uh, and that's why I found myself playing these arrangements initially and sometimes uh, at the end of the process in this lower tuning. This, "Quote unquote open tuning." There are certain sections that I felt it w were easier in this tuning. Although with changes of key and changes of mood, there are some difficulties that, that I encountered too. Anyway, so that's kind of the deal on this. I thought it might be fun to uh, play one of these. I was going to rip through uh, um, the Liberty Bell March, but if I were to sit down and play it, my chances of playing it perfectly would be about zero percent. My chance of playing it, covering up some of the shortcuts eh, in the 90%. But I thought then I'd have to compete with some lawnmower, some kind of truck going by here and uh, mess everything up. So I know I'm ranting. But so I thought it might be fun to talk through this uh, song, this Liberty Bell March, my arrangement, and uh, encourage you to, to take a stab at this stuff. You know, I. Even though these are all my arrangements, for, for a long time I was just hacking my way through. It was fun just to hack my way through, mess around, take a section that I like, do the section, and you know, hack my way through the other things. I mean, it, it, it's fun just to experiment playing this music on guitar. Anyway, so I thought, let's talk through this Liberty Bell March. And I'm in a tuning of guitar, capo tune, tuning called C, G, D, G, A, D. And I'll use a convention by my good friend Steve Boffman, who puts like a phrase on a tuning, like C G D G A D might be Celtic guitarist, good, do good, and, and I couldn't find a positive D word. I kept saying die, dissemble, um, draw. I guess drive is sort of so. Celtic guitarist, do good and drive. So there's more positive than Celtic guitarists do good and die. I guess we do eventually, but uh, uh, hopefully not for a while. In any event, uh, so that's the tuning. C, G, D, G, A, D, uh, top 
the bottom to top. And that's capo too. And just a tuning where just the songs are getting ready to leap out. All kinds of tunes. Anyway, so C, G, D, G, A, B. I kind of think in that tuning and then translate it into other tunings, often drop D. Anyway, so that's the tuning. And with these Sousa marches, sometimes the challenge is right off the bat. The intro, which is, has to be played at a pretty fast speed, it kind of is a brutal. I mean, in, in uh, Liberty Bell, it goes something like this. <laughs> get through the intro and not mess it up I'm doing well so anyway so that's the intro kind of playing an octave with these chromatics now here's where I thought this tuning worked well except I kept messing it up goes Take two. I'm going to take three. See, there's not a lot of left hand stuff going on, except there's a little chromatic thing that I'm not used to doing and I continually mess up. That little chromatic, I just don't, I've never done that in another song that I can remember in 14 hours or whatever it is. And there's a certain amount of that in this tuning in. In, uh, in the Sousa March, little chromatic changes that I'm just sort of in a place in the guitar I'm not there very often. There's so that's kind of the beginning. But then there's a little change. You have to come way up here. Next part kind of fits well into this tune. See, the left hand is not much going on. Just a little. So I, if I stop to talk and think, I get in trouble. And then it gets tricky. Harmonics are right there when we need them. Then we go to an entirely different type of music. I thought the tuning worked well right there. That's another reason when I was trying to figure out how to start with this song, that, this melody. You can do a little bass variation. And this part right here. 
here. Now we get into this crazy bridge. thing about this music is you start playing you kind of can't stop and you mess up you screw up and get things wrong and hack away but it's so much fun and it's so great so you have these different sections of the song with with a different character a lot of pulse but then some then it draws back into a more beautiful melody the thunder is another one just like that thunder is really hard even my simplified arrangement is and, uh, oh boy, that's why I needed the, the power of God, thank you, Jesus, to get through this album. My, uh, my engineer and co-producer, Mark Moss, put the things together that we did and had to record at home during this whole COVID-19 thing. But So just on these different sections, again, you got this right at this difficult intro that's so easy to mess up. And then... unusual but if you get sort of under your fingers right there and then it's weird shift and then there's some relief in this next session are so perfect there. Da, 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 da. Now, in that part in the book, if, if I and I hope you get, I hope you get the book. I hope you're excited enough to jump into this this Mel Bay book, um, hundred and some pages of tears, sweat, blood on my part putting that together. And thank you to Bill Bay, the president of Mel Bay, and. Uh, all the people working on it, uh, Sharon Feldman, a bunch of other people. And uh, anyway, that book has is more complicated, use of some different harmonics and variations. I had to simplify it to uh, 
to do this recording in some kind of real time basis. But those harmonics are just so available. <laughs> from the book and it's not that simple and then this beautiful melody Anyway, I hope this little uh, video uh, inspires you to take a shot at this music. This is wonderful music, and you know we're cutting cutting some new cloth here. Or, or I should say we're mining a field that has not been mined very much before. When it has been mined, it's resulted in some tremendous, some real nuggets. Guy Van Duzer's version of uh, Stars and Stripe gold standard. And this Vorhauer arrangement of Washington Post that Doug Back does such a beautiful job on, that, that's, a, that's a nugget. And I hope some of the things I've done are nuggets. And as I say, there are more out there. This Ferris to the Fair is a, is a really nice march. The early marches of uh, Sousa don't kind of resonate with me as much as his later music. Um, but he did a lot of marches, I think 130, so I, I mean, I lost track in 100, so well over 100 marches. And a lot of other music, too, he did. He, he didn't simply do marches. But I am just encouraging you, uh, either as a listener, to, to uh, hear some of the, this, this music and other instruments, and as a guitarist, to take the plunge and get into this. It's, it's got so much great melody and so much life in it. So anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I beat the lawnmowers. I have, haven't heard too many motorcycles or trucks outside. Um, the cat has not been scratching at the door to get into one of her favorite places. So this has been good. And if this microphone works, and um, I guess if you see this, I'll have thought that this came out all right. So anyway, it's been a joy just to share music with you. This is, a, by the way, a Franklin guitar my signature model guitar and uh, it's got some elixir strings that have been on it for about six or nine months and still sound pretty good so uh, 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 props to elixir and Nick Cookich of Franklin guitars uh, so anyway I hope this is I hope you enjoyed this uh, it's right before Memorial Day which is a serious uh, holiday that I always do uh, Hector the hero I tend to post on Memorial Day and just one of the most beautiful laments ever written by a human being. Hector the Hero by J. Scott Skinner, fiddle player, in the early part of the 20th century. Anyway, be well, stay well, stay safe, and I hope to see you down the road.